where to start except for probably the most highly anticipated matchup in all of D2 football, at least this week. That's Ferris State at Pitt State. Ferris State, the Bulldogs, they're picked to win the GLIAC this year. Finished 8-3 and three last year in what was uh, ultimately, ridiculously, a disappointing season for the Bulldogs, the back-to-back uh, defending national champions. What a matchup this is going to be. And again, Ferris State to have three losses is a, a crime, I think, in their eyes. Two of them being to their rival over there at uh, at Grand Valley. Grand Valley also defeating Pittsburgh State in the next round of the playoffs. Pitt State finished last year 11-2 and as co-MIAA champions down there with Central Missouri. So that's uh, going to be a big-time matchup between these two guys. And uh, Pitt was picked second in the MIAA poll. They've been giving Central Missouri a lot of respect down there. They deserve it, especially when you got a signal caller like Zagabrowski, excuse me, coming back under center for the Mules. But uh, Pitt has certainly earned a lot of their respect, and I was almost surprised by how high they've been ranked, not only in the MIAA preseason poll, but also all the different national recognition. When you lose a head coach and you lose some other big-time play caller or playmakers, I should say, uh, and some other guys that you lose to graduation, to still have that same level of respect shows what the coaches and the media alike think of this program and the respect they give them in order to have that confidence that they're going to be back year in and year out on the national stage. So Ferris, though, they return a lot. The same head coach, obviously, and he's still in charge over there. They're going to win football games as long as he's the head coach. The same quarterback in Golker. We got a glimpse of, uh, I believe his name is Trinidad last year. Brings a little bit of a different flair to that Ferris offense. Golker very much the workhorse that that Bulldog offense goes through that physical downhill style that suits him and that Ferris offense so well. They also bring back the linebacker Connor Near after a stint at Oklahoma. We had him on the program a while back. The former D2 All-American is back wearing the black and red and yellow. They got some new uniforms down there, too, that look pretty nice. But he's back on that defense, which makes them even scarier on that side of the ball. They're going to be very stout at the line of scrimmage. But you know Pitt State is the same thing, right? Pitt State, though, they've got a quote-unquote, I use air quotes here, new head coach. And Tom Anthony, I believe his name is, who's previously on the staff. He stepped away from football, is my understanding, and then comes back now to be the head man in charge of this guerrilla squad. He uh, loses some playmakers. They followed the previous head coach uh, up to the Division I level. He took a... Another job there. They also graduate some key pieces. They're still going to be tough, though. I don't want to make it seem like they lost everyone. They're bringing back 13 starters, both sides of the ball there. Ten of those guys with all-conference MIAA honors, right, for Pitt State. So it's not like we've got a totally revamped a new roster coming into this one for Pitt State, which, by the way, home game for the Gorillas in the jungle, Carney Smith Stadium. Uh, I believe this is on the 31st, so it'll be the Saturday. And... This is a game that, like, right off the top of my head is, like, line of scrimmage. Man, this game is going to be ridiculously one inside of the tackles. And if you're Ferris State, I think they're just so excited. I mean, I have no idea. But from an outside perspective, I think Ferris State is so excited for this challenge. And of, like, Ferris State's MO for the longest time is, like, you know exactly what we're going to do. Good luck trying to stop it, right? Very much in the same sense we talk about Harding with their flexible and kind of the way they run things. Ferris State certainly spreads the ball out quite a bit more. And they've got some more dynamic playmakers on the outside, you could argue. Uh, you know, maybe can compare to a team like Harding, but that style of downhill and that knowing what the opposition is going to run and like almost begging them or kind of uh, not begging, but daring them, I think is the right word to try and stop what they know is already coming. That offensive line unit for Ferris is the unsung hero of those national championship teams and being able to have that depth at that position and that unit is something that Ferris has kind of made their calling card in the last couple of years. Pittsburgh State very much kind of in that same realm. Uh, two different squads, two a little bit different styles of offense, but uh, when it comes to the line of scrimmage and comes to the physicality, these two teams match up incredibly well and incredibly even. So this is going to be a very fun one to watch. Would not expect this one to be a high score, especially in the first half. I think second half of this one starts to get a little unruly, gets a little crazy, and uh, it's week zero. Like, there's going to be MAs, missed assignments. There's going to be things that happen that you do not expect. Um, first half, expect a couple heavyweight punches and these teams trying to figure each other out. Nobody will be, like, sitting back and waiting. Like, these teams are both coming out and trying to deliver that first punch. So definitely expect for this to be a slugfest in the first half. I'm excited about that second half. I think things could get, like, unwound down there in Kansas and some, some shit could go pretty haywire. But fair State, Pitt State. Who knows? Um, maybe I'm a Gleak guy, but I kind of like Ferris State in this one, going on the road and just surprising people week one. But that Pitt State team has a ton, a ton to prove. <laughs>